Hello everybody and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. This time we'll talk once again about Blazor and about a brand new feature that we have on Blazor in .NET 5 and this is JavaScript uh, isolation. Now we already did a video on CSS isolation that you will find in the description of this video if you didn't watch it so far. So if you didn't do it, then yeah, just feel free to go there and, and watch uh, uh, every, basically everything that you need to know to get started uh, with using CSS isolation in Blazor on .NET 5. So in this video, we will focus on JavaScript isolation. And if CSS isolation was uh, very straightforward and very easy to work with, uh, JavaScript isolation is not really difficult but it is not that straightforward as we uh, saw in CSS isolation. So let's get right to the business and let's try to implement here some JavaScript. And this is of course uh, something that we might not uh, want to do or uh, we are not obliged to do uh, to, to write our own JavaScript when we work with Blazor except for uh, very uh, few use cases for instance when you are using third-party javascript libraries with which you need to interact in a certain way then you might even need to write some javascript or or work with javascript or for instance if you uh, actually use some very very specific uh, browser features or document object model features that are not yet fully supported in blazor so in that case you might want uh, to write some JavaScript and then uh, basically call uh, .NET functions or .NET methods from JavaScript or vice versa, call JavaScript functions from .NET methods. But besides these use cases, uh, in my day-to-day -day work, as I uh, actually work on, on a bunch of applications in Blazor, both server-side and uh, client-side, and I didn't really need to write any JavaScript code. But yeah, for the sake of, of this demonstration and to see exactly how this is supposed to work, what we want to do today is to actually get started from the Blazor template that uh, we have, that's a default template with the counter, with the weather forecast and things like that. And we are here on the counter component uh, that has a very, very basic implementation. Of course, all the logic behind is in C Sharp. And in order to demonstrate how JavaScript isolation works, what we want to achieve right now is to actually switch a little bit things here so that the logic for uh, incrementing the counter should not be in, uh, in the .NET code uh, or shouldn't be written in C Sharp directly, but it should be written in JavaScript. And we'll then call a JavaScript function from inside this uh, increment count method to then get the new counter value and display it, of course, uh, on uh, the browser. So for now, let's get started and uh, let's create a new JavaScript file. And for JavaScript isolation, the first important thing to note is that you have to place it in the www root folder. So we saw with CSS that we could simply uh, add a file along with the main component uh, to which we wanted to add the isolated styles. But in case of JavaScript, we still have to add our JavaScript file in the www root folder. So let's get here and create a new file and we'll call this counter.js. So it's a very, very uh, uh, easy thing to do. And let's write a function here. And we will also need to export the function. Uh, let's see, export and then a function. Let's call this increment uh, counter. And let's get here uh, the current count. And then we'll simply uh, increment this return plus plus current count. And uh, that should actually do it. Now we have this JavaScript function and the magic or the way that uh, isolated uh, JavaScript is working is based on this export and import modules features that we have in JavaScript. So in order to be able to actually use uh, a scoped or isolated JavaScript, you need actually to, to, to export the functionalities that you actually want to use. So this is what you have to uh, take care about in your JavaScript file and make sure that you export all the things that you uh, want maybe to reuse in uh, your Blazor application. 
so let's now get uh, to our counterpart here and here uh, there is not really a lot that we would need to do but the first important thing that we would need is we will need the ijs runtime uh, so let's uh, add the using here or inject sorry because we need to inject this service it's called ijs runtime let's also type it correctly of course and this should be called let's call it js runtime so that should be it now the other thing that we might need here right now is uh we need here in the c sharp code actually we have this uh, this current count which is set to zero and what we also need is here an object of type i uh, js object reference and let's call this counter module because this will actually hold our javascript module uh, that we want to actually uh, import in this uh, component we did uh, export some functionalities in the javascript file and we want to import it in the component where we actually want to use this uh, isolated javascript this is actually uh, let's say the mechanism through which this javascript uh, isolation works on blazor on .NET 5. now once this is done uh, we need to also override the on uh, initialize the async lifecycle method because when the component gets uh, initialized we want to import the module that we exported from the javascript file uh, so let's uh, write it protected uh, override async uh, task but i have to also type it correctly so it's async task of course we have to to use the name and the name is on initialized async uh that should be fine i guess and here what we would need to do is uh as said we need uh to use actually the runtime uh that that we uh, injected here in this component and to actually load or import uh this module so we'll see we'll say here that the counter module uh equals to uh, js uh, runtime and then we have this invoke uh invoke async and here we in it, it this is a generic method and it is uh i uh, js uh, object reference this is uh what we want uh, to get back here and here what we need to pass into this method uh, is actually very very simple first this uh, import keyword so uh, that we want to actually do an import of something that it is uh, exported and then uh, we have to specify where the javascript uh, file is located that we actually uh, want uh, to use and here actually uh, one import of course we need to await this and uh, that should do it now one thing that it is important is that when you specify the javascript file here uh, this argument here is based or relates to the www root folder so this is actually why in order to be able to load your javascript file you need to create it somewhere uh under www root otherwise you would you wouldn't actually be able to import uh, that file or the functionalities that you have exported in your javascript file so this is very very important now as we have this uh current or this uh, counter module after the component gets uh, initialized it would actually hold what we have exported here and in this case it is this function which is called increment counter and this actually means that if we go back here to this component uh, we can change here some things because we want to run this javascript uh, asynchronously so in this case we would uh, say that is private uh, async uh, task and it's called uh, increment count so the name can remain exactly the same the only thing is that in this case we said that the current uh current count it was actually already there but this would be 
equal to a counter module dot uh, invoke async and the method returns actually an int so we specify uh, that we will get back an int and here we have to specify first uh, the name of the function that we actually want to call and this would be increment uh, counter and then uh, we have to pass in a value and we pass in the current count okay so this should actually uh, do it right now so this means that each time we click the button we should call actually this javascript function that uh, we have uh, exported here in this javascript file and then of course uh, since the value will change we should see also the updated counter in our uh, blazor application but in this case uh, the logic for uh, incrementing the counter is actually executed via javascript so let's see how this runs so let's use dotnet watch and run and this will open a browser here there are a few things that i want to show you before we uh, actually get to check if that counter works or not uh, right now let's reload this once again i don't know why this exactly happened but uh, let's also open this uh, developer tools and let's go here to network and let's let's refresh this actually. So if we take a look here, we see that, uh, well, uh, some files were loaded, but there is no counter.js. And if we look under sources, uh, once again, there is no counter.js. So this means actually that our uh, JS file, our scoped, our isolated JavaScript file, was not loaded right now because the component actually is not called to life yet. So let's go back to network and let's clear this. So let's navigate to the counter right now. And if we go back here in the dev tools, we see that right now the counter.js file was loaded. So one other important thing that we get with, uh, with this JavaScript uh, isolation is that we can actually lazy load all the needed JavaScript files until they are really needed by the component uh, that actually uses them. And this is really, really important when you write a real uh, app and you don't serve because you don't have to serve all the static files at the same time. You can serve them uh, incrementally. So this is a very, very important uh, step. And of course, right now in sources, we have also this counter.js we can set breakpoints here of course and things like that but that's not important right now so if we click here on the counter we see that the count gets uh incremented and once again the way this actually works is that uh when we click the button then this c sharp methods uh gets uh, or uh, is uh, executed and in turn, this c -sharp method actually invokes or calls a JavaScript function, which is defined here in this counter.js. And then, of course, the logic is implemented here in this uh, JavaScript function. And then the result is actually return, uh, returned to the caller, which in this case is uh, this method that we have in c -sharp, And of course, that the value of the current count uh, will be then updating uh, accordingly. Now, before we wrap this up, there are a few nice things that I still want to show you here. So if you have this JavaScript file, what you can theoretically do is you can actually uh, export different type of functions, of course, because in a Blazor component, you might want to, well, uh, interact with, the, with uh, several functions that you want to write in this JavaScript file. And just to demonstrate it, we will create a new function that will do exactly the same thing but in, uh, but it will but it will be called differently so if we uh control save here control s and if we go here and we invoke increment counter 2 instead of increment counter uh if we go back to the page we see that it loaded and once again when we click it still works because we have this uh increment uh, counter 2 function that does exactly the same thing so this is this is working or this works as expected 
Now, there is one other thing that I want to show you here. And this is actually really, really nice because on one hand, you can leverage uh, actually all uh, the, the new cool stuff that we have uh, in, 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 uh, in the newer versions of JavaScript, let's say, so starting with uh, ES6. So let's do the following. Let's have here a class uh, that is called counter, of course. And this class, let's create a constructor in this class. And in this constructor, we say that this current count and this should be zero. And then let's have a function here, increment counter. And what this function will do, well, it will simply return plus plus this current count uh, but let's uh, let's be JavaScript friendly and let's name it like that so we should also do the change here now this is very very important because if you uh, export a class since you import it in C sharp you cannot really create a new instance of this class so what we can do however is let's have a const a uh, counter equals new counter and then what we do instead we do an export on the counter object which is totally fine and right now uh this is everything that we need to do in the javascript file let's go back to our counter component and let's change this just a, a little bit so right now when we invoke here something we just want to invoke a uh, counter and on the counter this increment counter and that should actually do it so if we go back to the browser we see that it still works so right now what we have done is actually we have moved everything here uh, in this javascript class we have created an instance of that class and then we have uh, actually uh, exported this counter and of course we have uh, imported it in our blazor app and we can call it from there but this is very very important you just need here to export an object itself so not the class because you can't really use it uh, in blazor uh, this javascript class and of course what we can do here is we can get rid of these other exports because we don't really need them and what we have in the end is a very a uh, very nice looking uh, JavaScript class uh, that we uh, do export and of course then import in our Blazor app and we can simply reuse it. Just let us look at it again. So if we click here on this click me, it just uh, increments the counter. And uh, that's actually it uh, for this concept of JavaScript isolation in Blazor on .NET 5 and how it is supposed to work. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't be shy. And if you think that this content is valuable for you, uh, just hit the, the thumbs up button. And if you think that this content might be valuable for others, once again, don't be shy and share it with your peers, share it on your social networks and things like that. It would be highly, highly appreciated. This being said, thank you very, very much for watching. And until the next time, I wish you the very best.